Hello and welcome to Reinfused. And today, yes, I am looking at the camera. Therefore, you know this means I'm going to be talking much more than usual. And that's indeed correct. Today, we are going to be talking about CPM, uh, an operating system from uh, 1970s odd, and one that has a, a real impact on computers today uh, in a big, big way. Uh, although possibly not in the way that it should have. <laughs> Right, so what is CPM? Right, um, I mean, when the first machines were were kind of being made, and before really microcomputers as we know them now were fully out there, so IBM hadn't really got its uh, IBM PC initiative underway. Uh, it was mostly uh, mini computers and, uh, and mainframes that were running things. Each machine tended to have its own like pre-purpose, pre-built operating system, if you will, or programmable system. They didn't really share much between, uh, certainly not between different companies anyway, and sometimes not in between models in companies. But there was a, there was an obvious opportunity for there to be a standardized system uh, to allow people to share software and skills between different companies' uh, systems. Uh, and one of the people that saw that opportunity was a, a man called Gary Kittle. Now, Gary developed CPM, which uh, at the time was called Control Program and Monitor. Again, in, as I said, in 1974, uh, a year before I was born. <laughs> so uh, that's how old that is. Um, he also uh, wrote it in a language called PLM or Programming Language for Microcomputers, which he also wrote. So he was a little bit of a god of those times, certainly. Uh, and he didn't come up with all this on his own. Uh, he took aspects from a lot of the systems that he was using, uh, things like Top 10 from uh, from Dex Systems, uh, their mainframes. And uh, but he took all this stuff and he simplified it. He took the best bits and he, he merged it into uh, into one operating system that he could port across several different machines. Now, uh, his business partner and uh, indeed his wife, Dorothy, <laughs> uh, urged him to, to make that transition to, uh, uh, to making it a professional product. And he uh, founded Digital Research Company, uh, DRS, <laughs> and officially trademarked CPM. But instead of uh, the original name, he uh, trademarked it as Control Program for Microcomputers because he could definitely see where the way forward was. Now, the strength of CPM uh, was that most of the programs could be easily ported to any machine that was running CPM. And obviously, the point of CPM was that it was going to run on multiple machines, not just from one manufacturer. Uh, this also, I mean, this this huge benefits when you put them down. So uh, a, a business could choose a machine from one manufacturer, but know that they could still run a piece of software that had been developed for other other systems and it effectively helped create this um this developer uh multi-platform uh development world that we kind of know today so before they'd be developing for one system only really uh maybe two if they were larger companies but this really meant that they could start making this software and very easily having it running on multiple different platforms and not having to be tied down to one hardware manufacturer. Uh, it also meant, obviously, because of this, uh, as a side effect, that CPM ended up having a, a really, really big library of software, which, again, drove uh, companies to start implementing it because it's kind of a... <laughs> It's kind of a circular thing where uh, people want to put the software on it because it can be on multiple systems, but also people want to use it because it's got a lot of software on it. Obviously, it all makes sense, and uh, and Kiddo and his wife uh, understood this very, very well. Now, uh, the one issue really with uh, the way CPM worked and with this easy porting is that uh, Kiddo tried to provide support for several different uh, microprocessor architectures. But one of the most popular ones was Z80, and so a lot of programs tended to use special features of uh, the Z80 CPU, and it meant that a lot of apps were suddenly only going to be available for Z80. And this did drive uh, a lot of uh, hardware manufacturers to start concentrating on Z80, such as uh, things like uh, the Apple II, one of the first like add-ons it had was a, a Z80 uh, CPU add-on, so... It's uh, it's kind of uh, it, it drove a lot of uh, yeah standards is probably a way it drove a lot of standards in the in the microcomputer world uh, because of its adoption uh, almost necessary adoption at the end right anyway that was that's the history of CPM 
many other YouTubers have done a much better review than me. Uh, but we uh, we kind of we need to go into some some more of. Um, I guess we need to talk about why we talk about why it's important. We need to really talk about kind of why it made an impact in the computing world. Obviously, we've talked about this whole idea of having uh, uh, an open platform, which basically allowed uh, different hub manufacturers to run very similar software, very good for consumers. But uh, obviously, the big question mark in this is is why then, in that case, are we is Microsoft kind of the big name in this area rather than digital research and it all comes down to uh big blue so ibm ibm effectively created this uh kind of home computer market by really making a, a standardized platform that people were quite easily able to implement and sell themselves uh now they uh when they decided to do this they knew they needed an operating system and they approached bill gates and his uh obviously his microsoft uh, company was doing quite well and bill Rather than saying, yeah, we'll do that, he actually pointed them to Kittle and said, look, this guy uh, makes CPM. I, we know he's making a version that is going to run on Intel's uh, CPU, so why don't you go and uh, and talk to him? Which, you know, fair enough. Uh, now, the the deal between IBM and, and Digital Research fell apart. There's lots of reasons why, or lots of people that say what the reason is. There's things about NDAs not being signed, all sorts of things. A lot of it is also IBM were trying to um, lock down a lot of it. So the CPM86, which would have come out and run on Intel's 8086 processors, they were trying to lock that down. And it isn't really how digital research worked. They worked on a licensing system where the different hardware companies would, would basically bundle CPM with their system and pay them a license fee for each machine. So the idea of kind of selling and having like a lump some to allow just IBM to keep using it however they wanted they weren't really happy with that so the deal fell apart anyway and um and that kind of this kind of flipped the, everything on its head so where we are now is is literally because of this this deal falling apart now of course what we know happened is that a, a small company called Microsoft uh made a bit of software called uh, MS-DOS although um it wasn't called MS-DOS for IBM of course it was called it, it was called uh IBM DOS or PC DOS and um MS-DOS was remarkably similar <laughs> to CPM. <laughs> and indeed, we're going to take a little look at CPM later on, and you'll see just how remarkably similar it was. Um, obviously, Kiddle didn't miss that fact. Uh, he, uh, he threatened IBM um, with lawsuits. IBM basically said, all right, tell you what, we'll offer CPM 86 as well at the time of purchase. So if somebody wants to buy CPM 86 instead, they can just buy it. And uh, Kittle kind of agreed to that. And it looks like from what happened, uh, from what we can see, that uh, that was not a good deal that he he didn't... When he looked at that agreement, I, I don't think he really looked at it to, a, to the degree he should have. Uh, so IBM released the uh, IBM PC. Uh, they offered PC DOS for $40. And uh, six months later, CPM86 was... Uh, they started to offer CPM86, which not entirely IBM's fault. Obviously, it wasn't fully ready. But by the time it was ready, they started selling it at $240. Obviously, if you're a purchaser and you're looking at this IBM system, which they've already said is going to be the de facto business system, and on one hand, you've got a $40 option, which was available right at the beginning, and people started writing software for, and it's uh, it's building up this this base. And then six months down the line, you've got, Something that is way more expensive. Which one are you going to choose? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it, it basically throws uh, DR DOS out, uh, DR digital research out of the market completely. Um, and they carried on, but the computer revolution was basically lost at that point, and Microsoft and IBM kind of wrote the rule book at that from then on. Kittle ended up selling digital research to Novell, uh, <laughs> that name, uh, and spent his time uh, in his mansion in Austin. Um, he was also a volunteer. He helped a lot of children uh, with HIV AIDS um, and unfortunately died in 1984 following a fall, which is uh, it's a real shame. Uh, there are various machines that run CPM. They can get a CPM simulator for the Raspberry Pi. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to run uh, CPM, but you don't want to get one of these old and... Uh, business style machines how do you run cpm well 
if you're a fan of 8-bit British computers, you may well have one that can already run CPM with the right software. And that is the Amstrad made oh, Sinclair Spectrum Plus 3. Yes! Because of the way the memory map is done on this, it's slightly different to previous Sinclair Spectrums, and the fact that he has the built-in floppy drive, although mine uh, doesn't, mine has uh, GoTech in there, because I couldn't find the, an actual disk with CPM, so that was the other option. Uh, yeah, this will actually run CPM. And, well, we, we'll, we'll take a little look of it right now. Okay, here we are with the Sinclair Spectrum. So... Uh, but my GoTech has chosen the image, so hopefully we just hit the loader and it should load that up. Obviously slightly faster than the three inch drive would have done. There's a nice blue screen. <laughs> and there we go. CPM Plus from Locomotive Software. You see there's not uh, very much space anywhere at all, because uh, these are not big. But as you can see, we're kind of running through uh, a set of uh, instructions that automatically load up. Almost, you might say, auto-executing. <laughs> and uh, if you want to get a listing on the, of the directory on the drive, we do DIR, <laughs> which is a command you may well know. So there you go. This is, uh, yeah, this is CPM. Uh, we've got basic. What happens if we load basic? And you see, we just type in the name of the software and it just loads it. Again, uh, quite a well-known... Uh, Command, or a way of doing commands anyway. No idea it's going to load. I've never tried this beyond just loading up. Oh, there we go. So we have a Mallard 80 Basic with Jetsam. Interesting. So, well, let's just try a normal basic program. Why not? I'm kind of away from the keyboard. <laughs> My typing isn't normally this bad. Oh, blimey. Okay, this is the, this is in the first problem. Where is the... Uh, Right, there we go. Found it. Right. <laughs> that was interesting. Right. Uh, it is, of course, the uh, the standard program. And there we go. It is a normal key. It just didn't work for the first time. I don't know why. And go to 10 and run. There we go. The standard program. Awesome. Right, does breaky work? Breaky does not work. I wonder how we break out of a program. We may be resetting. <laughs> I do not know how to break out of a program. Oh! There we go. Extend mode and C. Interesting. Well, anyway, it's basically control C. Which <laughs> That's pretty amazing. All right, so we can list. If we do exit, does that exit? Nope. Quit. I don't know how you get out of this program then. Um, anyway. <laughs> let's, uh, let's just reset. Why not? You have to hold down reset for a bit on the... Uh, Plus three because it will just retain something in its memory. Right, we hit load again. Doesn't take long to load, so it's not a huge problem. And we get to see that lovely auto executing uh, list of files again. I do like this blue. It's just a nice blue. <laughs> All right, so it even gets to use a RAM disk. Obviously, it's a, it's a 128K machine for the time that was an okay amount of memory. Although we were just getting into machines with 256 and half a meg of memory at this point as well, though. But for CPM, it wasn't a too a terrible amount of memory. Right. So what else we got on here? So, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that sort of, yeah, resemble what you, you know from MS-DOS, like the, the COM extension. And the fact that we have these three-letter extensions as well was pretty uh, interesting. But, yeah, so this is... Uh, this is CPM, <laughs> and it is uh, the operating system that really kind of we should be talking about now and just aren't because, uh, well, lots of reasons. Not uh, I'm not going to blame Bill Gates for this. I'm going to, I think, uh, Digital Research and IBM all have uh, 
some blame in this as well. But it's interesting. It's an interesting piece of history. And this is basically where computers come from. And the fact you can run this on a, a humble Sinclair Spectrum, a beat like the last one really of the uh, the main line of series, uh, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, then please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time. Thank you.